Hello and welcome to a new video on cryptography for everybody. In today's video, we want to talk about perceptual hash functions. We structured this video into three different parts. In the first part, we will compare cryptographic hash functions and perceptual hash functions. Then we will have a look at a particular perceptual hash function, the block hash method. And finally, we will have a look at our perceptual hash implementation in Cryptool2. What is a hash function? We had several videos where we had a look at hash functions. And in this video, I will give you a short recapitulation what a hash function is. A hash function is any function that can be used to map data of arbitrary size to fixed sized values. Here on the right side, you can see an example. You have some binary data here encoded as hexadecimal values. This binary data, this can be everything, goes into our hash function and then we get a fixed length value, for instance, this value here. And hash functions are usually used, for instance, for error detection, for data structures, for lossy compression and a lot of other things. Now let's have a look at cryptographic hash functions. And as I said, we already had videos about cryptographic hash functions on this channel. And a cryptographic hash function is a secure hash function. So it fulfills all the requirements that hash functions have. They, they do the same as usual or normal hash functions, but as I said, they are secure. And a cryptographic hash function is a one-way function which practically is infeasible to invert or reverse its computation. Here's also an example. We again give the same data now to a cryptographic hash function and the cryptographic hash function also returns a hash value, a short binary string for instance here. And when we have a look at hash functions and cryptographic hash functions in parallel, they look the same. But when I change only a single bit with a cryptographic hash function, for instance, the complete hash or at average 50% of the value here changes. And cryptographic hash functions are used, for instance, for message or data authentication, for message and data integrity, and many other things. Now let's come to the perceptual hash functions. And a perceptual hash function is also a hash function, but it's a type of locality sensitive hash, which is analogous if features of the multimedia, for instance, images are similar. So instead of just giving binary data to our perceptual hash function, we give an image to the hash function and it also returns a hash value. But when you change things or pixels in the image, then the hash does not change much. And on the next slide, we see some examples how the output of the hash function differ when we change the input data. Here again, we have our three examples, our hash function, our cryptographic hash function, and our perceptual hash function. And in each example, we change small part of the data. With our normal hash function, for instance, we only change here one bit. So we come from zero here to one here. This is a change of only one bit. And as we can see, a normal hash function then may only also change at a single position here. Of course, we have hash functions that also change in different positions, but it could happen that only one bit changes. Then we have our cryptographic hash function. And with our cryptographic hash function, when we also change a single bit, then on average, half of the bits change. That means that our output here is completely different, as you can see here. Now let's come to our perceptual hash function. Here we have our cat image. We get this hash value here. And when we change, for instance, the image by adding this red rectangle here in the corner, only the start, for instance, of our perceptual hash value changes. The remaining part is the same. So the remaining part of the hash value is the same. And this, for instance, can be used to search in a database for images. Now let's have a look at the block hash method. And the block hash method is a robust hash method intended for forensic analysis of image sets. For instance, as I said, you have a, da a database of images. You want to search if an image you have 
is inside or stored in this database, then you can compute the hash value of your image, search in the database for the same hash value, and then you can find your image. And the cool thing with perceptual hash functions is that even when you have a slightly changed or modified image, you will find the original image in the database. The block hash was developed by Steinbach and published in 2011 in this publication here. So if you're interested in more details on the block hash implementation, have a look at this paper here. And some years ago, I supervised a bachelor project at the University of Kassel. And in that bachelor project, a student implemented the block hash method in Cryptool2. And the block hash is fast, robust to common image processing and features, low false alarm rates. To verify its usability in forensic evaluation, they, the authors of the paper, discuss and evaluate the behavior of an optimized block hash. As I said, have a look at that paper. And as I also already said, the block hash also allows a comparison of images using its computed hash value and it consists of four steps. And let's have a look at these four steps. Here you can see the four steps. We have step one, convert to grayscale, step two, resize, step three, flip, and step four, binarize to get our hash value. And you can see here these images. I used an image from Android, the Android robot here. And in step one, we convert the image to grayscale. That means that the RGB, the red, green, and blue values are converted to grayscale values, which range from zero to FF. In the second step, we also resize the image to our target size. For instance, 16 by 16 pixels. This can be changed in Crypto 2, for instance, in the settings. So we have here a 16 by 16 pixel grayscale image. Then the image is in the flip step flipped horizontally and vertically until the brightest quarter of the image is in the top left corner. With our image here, we have the brightest corner here. So it's flipped twice so that this corner is now, or this bright spot is now on the top left corner. This, or the basic idea behind this is that even when you rotate an image, the block hash should give you the same hash value. And finally, we binarize the image in step four. That means we have a threshold. And if the pixel value, the color, the grayscale value, grayscale value is above this threshold, we set it to white. And if it's below this threshold, we set it to black. And this 16 by 16 pixels image now can be read as our hash value here. Now that we know what the block hash method is and what a perceptual hash does, let's have a look at the implementation of the block hash in Cryptool 2. I'm here now in Cryptool 2 in the start center. I use a nightly build version 9250.1. And let's have a look at our block hash implementation. To do so, you have to search in the template section of the start center for image hash. Then you find two templates, the image hash template and the image hash smooth comparison template. Let's first have a look at the image hash template. Here you can see that we have file input to load an image. Then we have the image hash component here. You can change the size of the image hash from 16 to 16 pixels to a size you want. And let's just test it. When we press play here, it loads our um, logo of Android. Then you can see here uh, the step four, it's called black and white. This is a binarization step. And here you can see the hash value. And the nice thing with the image hash component is that you can change the steps you want to see. In the first step here, or this is actually not a step, here you can see the original image. Then we can see the grayscale image. Then we can see the resized image. And finally, we can see the flipped image here. And in the last step, we can see the binarized image. And here we have our hash value. And now let's have a look. As I said, you can find 
Um, also images using this, this hash function when they changed. And for that we have here also a template which is called smooth comparison. Let's assume you have an image. I don't know if you can see me here, so I remove all this and I will put the template to the right so that I'm not in the way. And let's just start and have a look what we see here. So we once already, or we once again loaded the um, Android logo here, the Android um, robot. And you can see here, this is the hash value, the perceptual hash value computed by um, the block hash. Let's increase the size a little here. This is 20 and here the same, 20. And now as you can see here, we have a blurred image. And even when you blur the image, um, the hash is comparable. We compute here the Hamming distance between both hash values and the Hamming distance is a number of bits that are different between these two images. Since we compute 1024 um, bit size perceptual hash va value here, um, we can just subtract from 1024 the um, Hamming distance and then we can also compute here how similar these are. And right now, the progress component is set here to 96%. That means that these images are equal by 96%. And we have here our image processor component. And here you can even increase the smoothing of the image. And when I <laughs> smooth this very um, aggressively, you can say, the component still can or still thinks that it's by 78% the same image. And I think this is very nice. And of course, um, you, could, you could use a smaller values here. I don't think <laughs> that you would search for such a smoothed image or a blurred image. Let's set this to 50 maybe. And here you can see it's very blurry. It's Here's the original and it still thinks it's equal by 93%. Now let's, for fun, just open an image here. I, th I think we have some standard images in the pictures. No, I don't have. Let's just let's just make a screenshot <laughs> from Crypto2. Then let's store this here as the original. And then I want to change something in the image and I will just write something into the image. Let's write hello world and store this as the modified English uh, uh, image. <laughs> modified. Now let's try to use this workspace here to compare our images. So I remove this here. I need a second file input. The file input now goes into our hash and we want to see our image here. Let's load here the original from the desktop. It's uh, original PNG. And here we load our modified. And now we don't need... Ah, I removed the, um, the image... Um, blurry, uh, the component that blurs the image. Yeah, and as you can see here, we still, we, we have these two images here. We have the original image and we have the changed image here. And right now, um, the component or um, the hash is equal by, yeah, it, it says nearly, or it says 100%. We have a hemming distance um, of five. That means that these images are very equal. And of course, we could now change the size of the hash. Let's change, change it to um, 64 by 64 pixels. And then we also need to increase the number here for the computation. So we have 64 by 64 times 64, 64 times 64. And now when we increase the size of our um, pixels that we use or of our rectangles that we use for the um, comparison of the image, we can see then we get a bigger difference between those two images. So 
it makes sense to use not two small rectangles since then our images or the, the hash values will differ more. So there's probably some kind of sweep spot of the size. And I think the authors used, or at least my student used, used here um, 1024. So we just change this back. This is 16 times 16. And we also can change this here. Uh, not here, here, 16 times 16. This is the original, I think. And now we have 256. And with 256 bits uh, hash value, we have a difference of eight here. And I think this is the original from the paper. At least the component says 16 by 16 is the standard size. Yeah, and you could now use Script 2 also to um, test and play with um, the um, image hash component. I think this is a very useful component to yeah, compare images. And as you can see here, <laughs> this is also nice. Um, here we use and uh, I think this is exclusive or when I remember, yeah, this is exclusive or. So these two images here are the hash images, the last step of the um, block hash. And what we did here is we XOR these two images. And here you can see where these white pixels are. You can see the difference of the two hash values. Yeah, and as I said, you could now test this on your own, download the uh, nightly build, or I think this is in this version also in the release version of Crypto 2 and play a little with the image hashes. Yeah, and as I said, I think this is everything I wanted to show you in this short video. I hope you liked it. If yes, please give a thumbs up. Also, if you did not yet subscribe to this channel, I would be really happy if you do so. This really helps us to grow the channel and make Crypto 2 more popular. And also, I recently created my own blog at www.copaldev.de. So if you are interested in uh, my blog, also have a look at this. So thank you very much for watching and see you in the next video.